Hey everyone, welcome to Locked On Lakers special bonus edition for Saturday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. This might be, Andy, the biggest win of the year for the Lakers. They beat Denver at home without Anthony Davis for much of the game. Plenty to talk about. We'll do it next. You are Locked On Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked on Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, and in this case, on Saturdays. Um, Andy, when when the Lakers come out and they really, I mean, this is arguably their their strongest win of the season in terms of when you, when you factor an opponent, you know, it's up there with, uh, you know, the Milwaukee game or whatever, but, you know, 126-108 against a very good Denver team. And this without Anthony Davis for all but played what seventeen minutes, I believe, uh, of this one. He did not play in the second half at all. Yeah, and so, you know, I I was confident the Lakers were going to come back and and play a good game on Friday, um, just because that's been their track record. You know, disappointing losses uh, throughout the season. They've come back. We talked about this on Friday show. They've come back and played well, but you know, I didn't know they'd win. And I certainly didn't know they'd win convincingly. And I certainly didn't know they were going to win convincingly without the services of AD for for a half. Yeah. um, In in the first half, fairly early in the game, it's hard to even describe exactly what happened with AD just because in the moment, it didn't seem like that big of a thing. He he had a sequence where he was uh, driving against Nikola Jokic under the basket and landed a little bit awkwardly and and you could tell that it was an awkward landing but the the impact in and of itself didn't seem like that big of a deal like the it, both people I saw on Twitter and also when the game was being called itself they were having a little bit of difficulty pinpointing ex- exactly when this happened but mm-hmm. or the exact play when it happened but you could see in the first half while AD did not play badly he was definitely laboring, and in particular, he he was not moving with the speed and fluidity. That, he was that he was he was clearly from. he was definitely uncomfortable. Right, and you know there, you're right. There wasn't that moment where Davis hits the ground that you're kind of used to seeing, and all that. It wasn't no, that. Schroeder, was, Dennis Schroeder actually at one point in the game um, landed. I don't remember which uh, Nugget player he landed on his foot, and you know the refs took a look at it to uh, check out whether or not it would be a flagrant for the guy being in Schroeder's landing space. But Schroeder was on the ground in what you would think just surface level was a more serious injury than what happened with AD. Schroeder ended up finishing the game. Like mm-hmm. it's probably just hurt the most immediately. In right the moment. in the moment. Yeah. So the, the, the short answer to, you know, the, the, of, of, you know, the news is, uh, nobody knows yet what this means for ADs can be evaluated on Saturday. And obviously what happens to him long-term is a massive story for the Lakers going forward. We don't know the answer to that question yet. Um, in terms of the game itself, though, um, you obviously had a huge contribution from LeBron picking up the, the slack there, 13 of 20 from the floor, uh, 30 points. Nine rebounds, four assists, two steals, um, and you know just played it. Played an excellent game in 36 minutes, but this was a genuine group effort. You had Austin Reeves pitching in with 16. Russell Westbrook had a triple double, 15 points, 11 rebounds, 12 assists. Thomas Bryant filling in for AD in the second half, nine of 11 from the floor, 21 points. Even Patrick Beverly, Andy, had his best game as a Laker. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, first of all, with Thomas Bryant, you, you mentioned his stats, but it was really backloaded in the best way possible mm-hmm. because he played the majority of that second half, had 16 points, six rebounds, four offensive rebounds. He had a great assist to LeBron diving through the lane off a defensive rebound, off an offensive rebound that Bryant got. So he both created the opportunity on the glass and then actually helped create the basket for LeBron. He had two steals. He was really active in making Nikola Jokic work for stuff. Like he, 
his energy was really infectious, mm-hmm. I thought, in this game. And I and I thought, you know, you, you don't look for Thomas Bryant to be the guy that calms everybody down or, you know, sort of sends signals to the team. But I, but in his own way, I thought he actually set like a, a reassuring tone. Like, it, I can help, you know, like because he pretty immediately started making an impact. And, you know, when the game or when I should say when the second half begins with Bryant out there, because, you know, A.D. can't come back into the game at the time, he, A.D. wasn't even on the bench. He actually mm-hmm. began the second half still in the locker room. You know, you can start feeling a sense of dread because no disrespect to Thomas Bryant, he ain't A.D. No. And I thought Bryant did a really good job letting it be known right away I'm going to make my presence felt. I, I am going to contribute in this win. Well, he's given the Lakers, you know, D- Damian Jones has, uh, I think, underperformed my expectations, uh, to say the least. But Thomas Bryant has given them good minutes. And, you know, he can't, he's not AD on either end of the ball, but he is a, a pretty effective offensive center. Um, and, you know, it, They'll have to adjust, and again, we don't know how long AD is going to be out. They're going to do some tests. They're going to be out at all. Yeah, you don't know. We we'll probably get an MRI on Saturday. Like they're going to figure out what's going on there with the with the foot, uh, the right foot, I believe it is. And you know, so actually, I think it maybe is left. But um, regardless, they can get quality minutes out of 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 Bryant. But what I thought was really interesting about this too, you know, beyond the contributions, that, is the he didn't go. Darvin Ham didn't see. Oh, Davis is out. Let's lean into the small. You know, he stayed. You know, he had Thomas Bryant out there. He played Troy Brown. He uh, he gave fifteen. You know, almost sixteen minutes to Max Christie. And generally speaking, he did. I don't think. I don't think the little lineups played once. Like the three guard little lineups. I don't think they had that at all. Well. Um, on Friday, unless I might have missed it, but it was not a it was not a feature of this game for sure. I mean, Patrick Beverly only played twenty minutes, so that in and of itself is going to cut down on on the uh, amount of time that you would have those three guard sets to begin with. And it's worth noting too, Max Christie didn't just play fifteen minutes; those fifteen minutes, a lot of them were crunch time. Mm-hmm. Like when when the when the Lakers were really in the position to put Denver away, Christie was on the court and. I mean, this is something, you know, like whether on Twitter at Cam Brothers or in a lot of recent shows in decrying these little lineups. And, you know, a lot of this goes back to Beverly in general. And again, it we're really, really talking is, about three point guards. Not because, you know, is is Reeves a guard or is he, you know, two, three, right. like, you know, like those swinging guys. But we're talking about those lineups that have been a disaster with Schroeder, Westbrook and Nunn. Uh, Beverly, Schroeder, and and Westbrook, like these those those three point guard lineups that have just been terrible for the team. Right. This year. Um, I I've been saying a lot that in addition to just wanting the team to go bigger and find ways to get bigger that I don't think, frankly, were all that difficult. I've been wanting to see Darvin Ham give Max Christie mm-hmm. an opportunity, even like just ten to fifteen minutes a night, because beyond the fact that he's quite good, I think rebounding and it's something the team uh, needs you know some reinforcement with his defensive instincts are good he's athletic he can run the floor tonight he hit some outside shots but also too just they need to become a, a, a team with more versatility with their size they need to create the best possible version of themselves with size optionality and it's just felt like darvin's been holding them back for that from that for reasons that I just haven't been able to understand. No, and in in terms of picking a guard to soak up most of those minutes, obviously you're, you get a lot of minutes from Russ, um, who you know, played very on, well. He did, particularly in the second half. Yeah, really good second half. Um, again, 15 points, 11 rebounds, 12 assists, but was a plus 25. You know, for a guy who's struggled with a differential uh, all year long, it's not just the the raw numbers because we've seen Westbrook put up triple doubles in games where it really wasn't that good. It sounds yeah. crazy to say it, but it's you know, it's it's also not inaccurate. Um, Zero he, turnovers in the correct. second half for Russ. Huge. Um, and you know, but it, the 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 bulk of those minutes went to to him and to Schroeder, and that's really where they ought to go. And so I, I like the lineups that. Um, Darvin Ham put out there, and you know, just 
I don't think long term, this is this is not a crazy hot take, Andy. I don't think long term they can survive without Davis. Um, well, g- given what we saw tonight, Brian, somehow Anthony Davis has been both elevating the Lakers and holding them back. <laughs> he <laughs> at is the same time. He is simultaneously the problem and the solution. Yeah. Um, what but, a you know, what I'm saying like you know, but this this seemed to be one of those nights because you know this was a competitive game throughout. Um, it was. I think Denver was up by one at the half. Um, so this was this was a tight game, a competitive game when Davis was in there, and obviously then the Lakers run away with it in the second half. They outscored Denver by six in the third quarter, by thirteen in the fourth. You know that is not meant. That is not a sign that this is something that you would you know carry through um, over the long term. But it was it was cool at least for a night to see kind of that galvanizing effect that can come when a team knows they need to win a game, and now they're twelve and sixteen before they go back out on the road again. Um, and get contributions from guys who haven't necessarily been contributing. And, you know, I saw you tweeted this out, you know, 10, five and four from, you know, somebody like Patrick Beverly doesn't sound like a massive game. It's easily his best game as a Laker. It's the first time hitting double digits this season. Oof. Yeah. It's, it's I, I, 28 games into the year. I double and triple check that just because I wanted to make sure that, I didn't end up accidentally and inaccurately giving him a backhanded compliment. And I didn't mean it as a backhanded compliment because he played well in this game. And I, and I think honestly, Beverly is helped. I mean, forget the effect on the team. I think Beverly is helped by having his minutes reduced because. Oh, there's no question. He, he is somebody that a plays extremely hard and very physical, regardless of how well or poorly you think he's playing that can take a toll on you, but also too, just until until he starts becoming a more consistently you know, productive offensive player, less is going to be more with him. But that doesn't mean that it's that it's automatically all going to be less. So again, right. that that balance that we saw tonight is something that I think Darwin should look to to find more of. Yeah, I think you know I, I saw uh, our friend Cranjus from basketball at uh, Tim at uh, underscore NBA on Twitter. Uh, host of the, they do the Lakers exceptionalism pod, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, he he pointed out that it's it's twenty minutes chopped up into like four and five minute stints, which is good too because then it's like if he's playing that time, you, you know maybe you're giving up not so much on Friday, but you're giving up a little bit of offensive, but you're not doing it for eight minutes at a time. You know yeah. it, it makes a difference. Um, you know that energy can come in. He can play really, really hard. Bring that energy. Bring the infectiousness. Try to force some turnovers. Get up and down the floor. But you're not doing it for seven or eight minutes where you're ultimately playing handicapped. And so, um, I, I, I misspoke. The Lakers do have one more game at home before they get out on the road. But um, it, it, it's a it's a very winnable one. You know, you're welcoming Kyle Kuzma Washington. showcase game. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but you're welcoming Washington back into the building, and you head out on the road. You play Phoenix, you play the Kings, um, you know, the Hornets will have that's back at home briefly before Christmas. Uh, Lamella Ball is back. But point being, the rest of the month is still very, very difficult for the for the for the Lakers. Um, you know, aside, you know, they play aside from that game with the Wizards and then the one, you know, ran, super random home game on the 23rd. They're basically out of town until January 4th. So this was practically and emotionally a huge, huge victory and another sign that these guys can play with anyone um, the way they're going right now. And uh, it's, it's certainly not any going to stop the conversation about do they need to make a trade? What kind of trade should they make? And when does this trade need to happen? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. We've seen that they are better than their record and they have they have pockets in games pretty much consistently in every game where they look like a good team. It's really Mm -hmm. a question of just how consistently can they do it? How much better than their record do you think they actually are? Even if you think they're better than their record, a couple things before we go worth noting, first of all, with uh, the wizards coming in on Sunday and it now being uh, the official kickoff to trade speculation time, Kyle Kuzma on the record has let it be known he is going to be opting out of his contract with the Wizards. Uh, his player option coming up, he's going to test free agency. 
uh, which makes it really interesting to figure out if the Wizards think they can retain him. If uh-huh. not, do they need to move him? And if hey. you're the Lakers, if you're the Lakers, do you give up a pick to try to get him now, or do you think you might just sign him and hold on to the pick? There's all kinds of calculus going on. Yeah. Here. Also, too, a cool stat with Russ. Um, he had his 196th career triple double tonight, and I, I think this is from Basketball Reference. I apologize if I'm misattributing. But he is the seventh player to record multiple triple doubles off the bench. Only Detlef Shrimp, who has three of them, has more. Russ has two now off the bench, which makes him the highest in Laker history. Like he and Magic were the only ones who had ever done it um, off the bench before. But, you know, I, I think it's safe to assume that Russ is going to break uh, old Detlef's. Record I think by, that, I by think the that, end of the season. That is season. a safe assumption. And I will say, as much as we talked about last season, how Russ viewed success or failure seemingly too often through the prism of triple doubles, um, and seemed to think that that's how fans saw his success. Laker fans way you know way off from the reality. Fact of the matter is, a it's still a really impressive achievement and B it means something to him. So when it comes like it does tonight in in a way that really elevated and helped his team in a really important game under really difficult circumstances, it's, it's really cool to see. And and it's something that I think he will be happy about in this case for the right reasons. Uh, One last thing. Um, We do actually have a, an update on um, Anthony Davis. This one from Thomas Bryant via Mark Medina. (laughs) Uh, He seems okay. I'm going to check up on him again to make sure big dog is all right. So uh, don't worry about it. Dr. Bryant is on the case. Um, So we should get an update from him soon. Uh, Obviously as information comes out, if it's something significant, we'll update it. Um, through the weekend, but um, otherwise, you know, I'm sure by Sunday and Sunday's game, we'll know a little bit more. Um, Locked on Lakers and YouTube is where you go to see the show. But before we go, Andy, uh, I do want to tell you this. Yeah. So okay, you're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks and a few can become a few too many. And the evening comes to an end. People start heading out and you think of calling for a ride, but then it's like, nah, you know what? I live nearby. I can make it home. It's not a big deal. And what are the odds that you're going to get pulled over anyway? And even if you did, what's the worst thing that's going to happen like insurance goes up you lose your license if you lose your job you total your car you injure someone you kill someone like everybody knows about the risks of driving drunk and the results are tragic they're often deadly and that still though does not stop people from getting behind the wheel while under the influence and that's why police officers are out there right now particularly during holiday season when people are often out and about and drinking looking for impaired drivers on the roads, and it's to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe. Plan ahead. Get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting, info, stats, news, and analysis. You get the latest odds, trends, and uh, everything else for every professional and amateur league out there. That's pro football, college bowl season. The bowls are going on, Eddie. Some teams that I did not know existed are playing bowl games as we speak. Uh, and so kudos to them, and you get all the lines at Bet Online. Uh, plus basketball. Uh, The World Cup wrapping up on Saturday. They got it all. Uh, So if you love sports podcasts, and surely you do because you're tuning into this one on a Saturday, you can even find those at Bet Online. So everything. I wasn't kidding. Uh, They're always the fastest and easiest way to get uh, all the betting info that you need. So head onto the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. See everyone uh, next time.